It's been a while since I've done an on-camera message, and so here I am. I want to talk to you a little bit about the authorized 1611 King James Bible. That is the Bible that came off the press in 1611. Now, I've recently written this book, The Real 1611 King James Bible. And at the top it says, Authorized. And over here, there's a little KJV in a circle with a line through it. So this is not about the KJV primarily, although I am comparing the real 1611 King James Bible to the KJV. Now, those of you who have followed me and listened to me at all know that the 1611 authorized King James Bible is not the same Bible as the KJV. The KJV was made in 1769 by a guy named Benjamin Blaney. And Benjamin Blaney basically edited the authorized 1611 King James Bible, and he made a lot of mistakes. And I wrote this book to show people the problems with that KJV Bible compared to the real King James Bible. And the other reason I wrote this is to show you the truth of certain doctrines, and that is the internal witness of Scripture. A Bible that is truly the Word of God must have no contradictions in the internal witness. It has to be, as Jesus said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses is the truth established. And so that applies equally to the written Word of God. And I show you those correlations in the 1611 so you can see that there are no contradictions in the internal witness. And I also compare those internal witnesses to the witness in the KJV. The KJV does have contradictions in the internal witness. But I begin this book by discussing various aspects of the 1611, the real 1611, and also the basic principles of how we are intended to understand what is the Word of God. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. There's no other way. So I start the book out by talking about what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And he's very clear that to understand what is the Word of God, you must be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. This is not something you can understand superficially or carnally. So what I'd like to do is read something from the introduction of this book to give you an idea what it's all about. Many people who have read this book have now changed to the real 1611 King James Bible. And I praise the Lord for that. And for those people, I wrote another book. And this is titled, Everything Matters. Now, what it does is it shows you the correlations in the 1611. And it compares the 1611 authorized King James Bible and it compares the NABRE, the NIV, and the New King James Bible. It shows that those Bibles have a corrupted internal witness. And this is meant for people, this book here, is meant for people who have read this book and are now reading the 1611. It's more of a compendium, and it's a study tool. If you spend time in this wee book, and use it to help you study your way through the 1611, it'll make the process a little bit more expeditious and help you to understand the principles that make the authorized 1611 King James Bible the preserved Word of God. There is no other equal. There is no other like it. So, let me, without further ado, put my glasses on and read to you from the introduction. So here we go, folks. The real 1611 King James Bible. And here we have, I don't know if you can see that, it says introduction. So I'm going to read to you from the introduction. It goes like this. Introduction. Tingling ears. Few have actually read the authentic 1611 authorized King James Bible. However, many think they have because they've read the King James Version, KJV. And fewer still have carefully compared the 1611 authorized King James Bible and the KJV. In this book, 
I will explain some of the critical differences between the two Bibles, both bearing the name of King James, but only one legitimately. All Christians acknowledge that the Holy Ghost illuminates Scripture, and without His indwelling believers, it is impossible to discern Scripture's deeper meanings. Yet few can explain the spiritual superiority of the 1611 authorized King James Bible over all other Bibles. For that reason, I have dedicated the first chapter to discussing the role of the Holy Ghost in opening our eyes to the truth of this matter. Jesus said that you must be born again, and you must be indwelt and led by the Comforter. Without spiritual renewal and empowerment from the Most High, we know nothing of scriptural value, and all Bibles appear more or less the same. I will explain how I overcame years of indoctrination by the institutional church, its scholars, teachers, and pastors. The misconceptions I held were the same ones most churched Christians believe regarding Bible inerrancy. I will dispel those misconceptions and explain the vital importance of authenticity and how academia's definitions of error and inerrancy are misguided and in many cases purely subjective and wrong. After that, I will explain what Scripture teaches regarding the inseparability of Jesus and His Word and how they mirror each other perfectly. Then I'll discuss the translators of the 1611 Authorized King James Bible, referencing their introductory materials to show their attitude, method, and intent. In doing so, I will dispel many popular but misguided notions that Christians have been taught regarding the translators. After that, I'll provide direct comparisons between the authentic 1611 AKJB and the KJV, showing many of the egregious corruptions that Benjamin Blaney introduced into his so-called updated and corrected version. Most Christians are aware that the Apocrypha is not pure God-breathed scripture and is not part of the canon. However, they have no idea why the translators inserted it between the Old and New Testaments in the 1611. I will explain why it belongs there and why publishers removed it once they realized its true purpose. From there I'll talk about Bible lineages, history, and scholarly deception that has today spawned an incredibly lucrative commercial monstrosity, of which Christian publishers, media, academia, and the institutional church are cogs in its machinery. To accomplish this, the 1611 authorized King James Bible had to be stigmatized, diminished, and replaced by counterfeit and corrupt Bibles. Today you will be hard-pressed to find an authentic 1611 AKJB in any pew in America, let alone the world. Satan's objectives have been achieved. He recognizes the pure testimony of Jesus Christ and has done everything in his power to corrupt, malign, stigmatize, and hide it. While Bibles that are sufficiently leavened and serve his purpose, he's ensured are highly visible, plentiful, and readily available. With feigned words, the devil has made merchandise of those calling themselves Christians. None of this would be possible if Christians today believed the 1611 AKJB and it alone. Between the pure preserved words of God and the leading of the Holy Ghost in the life of a true believer, the Christian commercial complex and its corrupt seminaries would quickly crumble. Believers would understand Jesus' promise to the body of Christ. Ye need not that any man teach you. The truth of those words would sink in. Be sure that God has preserved his word in a form that, but for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, transforming a person, none should desire it. Like the incarnate Logos, it would be despised and rejected of men and unappealing to the unregenerate, carnal mind. The only Bible like this is the 1611 authorized King James Bible. All others receive the blessings of academia and the institutional churches. The 1611 AKJB has most certainly been despised and rejected, and through the course of this book, 
I'll explain why. I'll leave my reading off there. That's page 14 of the real 1611 King James Bible, authorized. And perhaps I'll pick it up at another time, but I wanted to give you a sense of the flavor of this book that I've written and direct you to the 1611. Once you have the 1611, you don't need books like this and you don't need me. But unless somebody teaches you and shows you, you won't believe. And you're not going to learn this in your industrial complex churches. The pastors are trained in seminaries and seminaries teach a particular thing. And I hate to tell you this, but it comes right out of Mystery Babylon. It's Roman Catholicism modified for Protestants. So your pastor's not going to teach you this. He doesn't have the foggiest idea of what I'm about to tell you. And in most cases, what I've written in this book falls on deaf ears. Pastors do not understand what I'm talking about. And they don't want to know. Because if they knew, they'd have to change. And people would clear out of their churches they would get kicked out of their denominations and they would find themselves very much on the outside looking in. So the career pastors are not about to listen to the truth and they're not about to teach it to you because they don't know it. How can they teach what they don't know? God bless. Thank you for listening.